So now that it looks like Ghana likely won't qualify for the AFCON next year, I think it's time we sit back, relax very calmly, no knee-jerk reactions. Let's assess what exactly has gone wrong and has been going wrong with the Black Stars in the last year, in the last two years, in the last four years, maybe even in the last eight years. So the first major issue that I have with the Black Stars, in my opinion, and again, you can Correct me if I'm wrong, tell me I'm talking absolute rubbish in the comments below. I think the Black Stars, there's a real distinct lack of balance in the squad. I'm not talking about technical team, I'm not talking about anything, just what's on the pitch. The 11 or the 22 that actually, you know, can take the pitch. I think there's a real distinct lack of balance. The Black Stars are top heavy. If you look at our front three, front four, we have, I'd say, a second, even a third string, you know, front four that, in my opinion, can compete with any front line in the world. You look at the, the one that started for both games against Sudan. You have on the left, sometimes Semenyo playing on the right, and Esnyama, and then through the middle, Inaki Williams. That was the last game, the one that we played in Sudan. If not those three, you have Fatau Isahaku, you have Jordan Ayu, and then you have um, Joseph Pinstel. That's another front three. Excellent quality front three. I mean, we're not even counting Kudus, where Kudus fits into that, you know, into that front line as well. It's insane how much quality, individual talent. I'm not talking about what it is that it, they, they actually do on the pitch when they don the national team jersey. But you look at individually where these players play, how they play, and the amount of outputs that their clubs are able to get from them. It's crazy. Now, what this lack of balance means is that when you have a front three that's not performing, I mean, we can, we can afford to change people, right? We can afford to bring in players and take out players who are not performing on the day. So if a Jordan Ayu is not performing, Inaki Williams comes in. If, you know, um, a Joseph Pinstel is not performing, you can easily bring in an Esnyama to try and, you know, play on that side. Antoine Semenyo is not performing. Oh, Fatah Wisa who comes in. In contrast, if any of our back four is not performing, like, who would we have? We have two centre-backs. We have Salisu and we have Jiku. And we saw yesterday, those guys, you know, may not be up to speed. If it's bad form, if it's, you know, lack of match fitness, it's just not happening for them. Yeah, we don't have credible replacements. And so that lack of balance is really rare in its head in the side currently, where, you know, we don't have options. Goalkeeping options left back right back options you know it's it's really affecting you know the way we're able to set up teams and the confidence we have in those players to be able to go out and deliver in those areas of the pitch now i say we have some really exciting talent at the front really world-class talent in my opinion but the problem that these players have is severe lack of cohesion with the side as a whole man for man these are some of the best players in the world in my opinion semenyo this season is proven that in the premier league he's one of the best attackers inaki williams in spain is world-class he's different gravy you have it's a Haku who literally carried Leicester City from the Championship to the Premier League. So then what is the problem? It's a, it's a big, big lack of cohesion between these players. And where does that lack of cohesion stem from? Well, in my opinion, I think there is a distinct gap, right, between our youth teams and our senior national team. If you look among the front three, right, you can say maybe only Isahaku played at youth level. I don't remember them in any of the, 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 the youth setups because the others, I'm sure, came from foreign setups. Semenyo, British. Inaki, Spanish. We see from other great, currently great national team sides, right? Some of these players have played together from the time they were in the under 14s all the way up to now the senior men's national team. So they, there's a chemistry, there's a cohesion within the side. They know how each other play. They can dovetail off each other. You look at Nigeria, you know, Ozyman for all of his quality abroad, he came up from the youth team. But when you, you know, you're trying to shoehorn an Inaki Williams who has excellent qualities, pace, power, finishing. He's not bad. And yet somehow he's struggling. Semenyo, pace, power, finishing. And yet somehow he's struggling. Nyama, pace, power, finishing, struggling. Then you have to ask yourself the question, is it a problem with the players? Or perhaps, in my opinion, is it a problem with the chemistry of the team? Let's talk a bit about the tactics as well. The tactics are too pragmatic. The last four years or the last eight years, maybe even longer, I'd say maybe the last 12 years, Ghana and the Black Stars have switched from an attacking, technically, you know, beautiful team to watch to a very pragmatic side. I remember the 2010 World Cup and the AFCON, the one goal project, it got us to finals, it got us fine tournaments, but it really stifled the creativity of some of our key players. And we relied on moments of brilliance from a military that can rise full in like a, a 40 yard shot in a world cup quarter final or an asamojan who can you know chest the ball down from like essentially a hopeful punt and then go and score a goal kevin prince brought in against the usa if you remember that amazing run he went on and scored from a tactical point of view we've always tried to you know show up the back but the pragmatism has extended 
way beyond what you know it should for a team of our quality and if we look back to some of our our best sides in this decade when we were smashing egypt 7-1 to qualify you know for the world cup we were not playing pragmatic football at the time we were outscoring teams and for better or worse you know i think we got found out at the world cup where we still try to play that level of football against some of the best sides in the world ultimately we came on stuck but we gave those matches a real go and then now we sort of shelled up into this pragmatic side where you know we're trying to get a, a couple of goals a goal here a couple of goals here and i'm not exactly sure why actually no i tell a lie i think i know exactly why and i think it's because our defense has not been up to scratch and i know this may be a controversial take right but watching some of our our best defensive performances honestly i'm struggling to think of like a a really good defensive performance from a black star side not in terms of like the team defending right not like 11 men behind the ball which is what i was talking about in terms of pragmatism right look if you look at the, the match yesterday right both of the goals came from you know the struggles of our center backs they, they were beating for peace hands down by you know the sudanese front line it, it's not it's not coincidental then that you know a, a, a coach and a manager like otuado is essentially shuffling bodies back to essentially try and stifle a floodgate of goals if we do you know try and open up the match we look at the matches where we've actually you know actually done something the, the world cup against korea we considered two goals and we had to you know dig ourselves out kudus individual brilliance the afcon against egypt kudus scored twice we considered two the, the match i think it was mozambique or the last match in our group where we considered two goals in like two minutes to essentially be knocked out of the tournament more and more and more and more the managers in order to counteract this have have, have resorted to these pragmatic tactics and it's really costing us teams have figured out that that's what we're trying to do so if they can put pressure on our back line the number of times i counted yesterday where salisu was either beaten for peace or sent to the shops by like a, a keche small keche or small skill and he's gone the other way Charlie, it was bad even before the goals they were beating us beating us beating us so yeah i think honestly in a defensive point of view i've talked about the top heaviness the lack of balance but i really have to emphasize the fact that in a defensive point of view like i say that's like ghana's biggest hole right now a back four a, a, a dependable back four and finally i think we have a big big gaping hole in the leadership department in this black star setup the lack of leaders is absolutely astounding and i'm not calling anybody out i'm not calling the captain out i'm not calling kudos out i just think that the the leadership profile of this squad is vastly different to maybe the 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 side of four years ago five years ago we had leaders all over the pitch we've seen it's it's um the evidence has been there that the gen z generation doesn't have the same mentality i'm not saying they have a weaker mentality i'm just saying they don't have the same mentality or the same leadership profile look away from the black stars right we look at captains the modern day captain right now when when a jude bellingham pops up and he's showing so much maturity and leadership on the pitch it's almost like a a revelation but back in the day we had every team had at least two of those players and in the black stars day we had at least five in that team john minsa steven apia sami oseku for michael asian asamajan sule muntari kevin prince watson it was a team littered with leaders right and now it's a very different setup these players I don't think they can carry that weight of expectation that's even look i won't go too far back even recently a day are you like for all of the day are you's faults like in terms of like a, le a leadership capacity look at the current crop right and and again i said i won't dig anybody else right but what party did leading up to this you know round of matches in my opinion was 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 unforgivable from a captaincy level like these are two matches that essentially will decide you know the national team's future for the next year qualification to the next afcon and as the captain of the national team you say you are no you are not you are unwell so you can't play at least be there right a number of times i've seen Dede injured and still shows up to the national team shows up for the national team sometimes he plays sometimes he doesn't but he's giving them the you know the agency and the drive and you know willing them on the only person i'd say in that current setup who is even displaying some amount of passion right is jordan and jordan in my eyes i mean and in, in, in a lot of you know ghana fans eyes jordan is a child i remember when jordan came on the scene like jordan is a small boy jordan is a you know he's a baby jordan is a baby i, I remember when was it was it the 2018 afcon or the 2019 afcon you know taking you know penalties like you know match deciding penalties and if jordan the child is, is is showing us you know some amount of leadership in comparison to the current crop it's it says a lot i'm not saying that i'm expecting any of them to rise up and essentially you know carry that weight but i just think that all of them are kind of shaking their responsibility when we consider the first goal against sudan yesterday in the space of three minutes we consider the game nobody's you know Charlie, guys get your heads on screw your heads on get together boys dig deep let's power through oh man the lack of leadership is absolutely telling who has received more criticism than these three players asamajan did they are you jordan are you and yet they always show up they are always there they are always putting their bodies on the line it's terrible but it's telling so yeah guys those are five of 
the biggest problems I'd say the Black Stars have right now. How to address it, I'm not too sure. Maybe that will come in another video. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you guys have any different thoughts? Are there any more problems or issues with the Black Stars that you may think of? And what do you think the way is going for it for the national team? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel, guys, for even more Ghana football content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.